I'm going to paint um, this image for the t-shirt that's going to be uh, for Animators Island. Um, and Ferdinand did this awesome sketch. I will try to show you the initial sketch um, that he made and he gave me. And he was asking me if yeah, if I could just paint in <laughs> all the things he has drawn. And um, yeah, um, I prepared something because it's quite of a boring job. Like, um, because I want to draw in uh, on top of the sketch and the sketch should be, yeah, it's it's not to be outlined. I prefer to prepare everything on different layers, separate everything out and make actual masks to everything. So if I put all of it together and I don't know, for example, select one layer, I can just try, I can just paint in without losing my edges. And this is what I tend to do because yeah, I can I can keep the shapes um, that F Ferdinand has already done in his initial sketch, and I won't I won't lose it during during painting it, and that's very that's very con convenient for me, um, because what yeah yes ah hi yeah I'm back okay that's 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 good news. <laughs> Uh, can you show how you actually do this? Like, I didn't know oh, yeah. for the longest time this feature that allows you to only paint within pixels that are already painted. Uh, yeah, um, sure, I can try to demonstrate. So, um, for example, I don't know, what would you guys... Uh, or what would you want me to, to, to draw in first? Or to to separate first. Say let's let's say we want to do the spiky ball here, and what I want I want to do now. I I see the shape of your sketch, and then I'm going in and select the path the path tool. Yeah, so many layers. I know it can be very frustrating, but I am very convinced that it will help you in the end. <laughs> yes. I try to, I, usually, I mean, if I do some personal stuff, I don't, <laughs> but for work, um, I try to be a bit more organized. I'm, I'm not a very organized person, but yeah, I try to be. So I want to, to, to make a pretty shape out of this. So I'm, I'm, most of the time I'm doing this with the pen tool because it um, gives me a very proper curve and what i'm doing next is you can you can make a path out of it or what i tend to do is just doing a selection so when i close my path i press right button make selection and then you can see there are this this little ends here and then i just fill in the shape and next for for the spikes as well here it would be very fiddly to what we what, uh, to to do this with the path tool with very with um, little 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 things I tend to do to just um, do it with the lasso tool because it's easier. But the, <laughs> the thing is that I'm like my my stroke can my strokes can be very um, shaky shaky yeah and that's yeah I mean it depends on 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 what you want to do. So I have this little this little spike here and then when I when I delete uh, not delete when I uh, shut down the layer for the scribble I can see okay I have my my um, shape here and what I think what what the advantage is of this technique is that I can just I can paint in like I don't know do whatever I want and I still keep the shape and I can I can I can be very precise about the edges as well, so I won't lose them. Um, uh, how how exactly did you switch that on? Uh, which one? 
the how did you make it that you can't draw outside of the shape ah oh um so i <laughs> it's a good question okay so i have the shape here and i do a new layer and if i press alt and go between the two layers the new layer i created um takes the bottom layer like layer 52 here <laughs> um as a mask so it won't go out it won't won't go out of the shape of the um really? of the shape below yeah and there's another way you can you could just what you could do is um you could just press uh control click on this layer then you can you see the little ends again go on your layer where you have drawn on where you can see like everything is um painted outside of the uh, of the shape and then if you click on this mask icon you could also do a mask so this is kind of the same way the important thing is i just want to have a mask for my base shape so i can draw in all the tiny details um later on uh but i think this is very complicated so i just tend to i just tend to do a new layer then um mm -hmm. i think it's called a clipping mask and then just draw in blah 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 and i did that for every every um for every shape we can see here so um yeah and what yeah what i wanted to say is <laughs> um because like a lot of people get very intimidated by the amount of layers you have in the end but if i for example want to have it on one layer and then drawing drawing the spikes and i want to draw draw it on top and then i'm like oh no i'm i'm not happy then i'm always like um erasing and going in again and they will draw over and it will like in the end i think it takes much more time to just to paint over and erase everything because i want to to keep the shape again or especially if i um i don't know if i if i go in with a soft brush um i could select lock and then do my um yeah do 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 um my soft my soft edges here but i think i don't know with my my experience it doesn't it doesn't work out it does work out if you want to have a very painterly style because if you have these sharp edges it it will always look a bit like very clean and um vectorized but i think the feeling will get away if you paint in actually like if you paint in all the details and you will still keep a very sharp edge which makes the the result of the image much more sharp and um yeah i i don't know i have the it's 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 a personal thing maybe someone works different but yeah if you want to if you want to have a very impressionistic piece of artwork i would not recommend it because maybe it's just too perfect in in, in everything yeah, i mean but, different different pieces different projects uh, demand different art styles yeah some art, art styles need soft edges and some need yeah hard yeah edges. but if you want hard edges like this is an amazing uh, amazing technique um i was wondering about you you already did the entire image in in black and white uh now why do you approach it that way why do you start in black and white and not with the colors um i think usually i i would start with colors but um i did it in grayscale for now and i think it was it's easier now to explain um how to start with the different materials for example um we um we already know that the box is going to be very light so we want the sh the the other sh the other shapes to really pop out so um 
Yana says, you are very... She can barely, barely hear you. I will try to, to increase the desktop audio now. So people... Guys, let us know if it's better now. Okay. I'm saying stuff. One, two, three, four. <laughs> test, test, test. Is this better? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um... Yeah? Should I, be better. I'm, I'm not I'm not sure, but yeah. Uh let us know. I will try to increase <laughs> it again. Um so yeah, um as you told me, I already know that the box is going to have a very light color or very light in value, like value seen from white to black. And what I want to do is to pop uh, is the shapes to pop out. So um, for example, here you can see the the spiky ball is really like um, is very visible against the white box. Um, here we have lighter shades; they are all very recognizable in their shapes. The only thing, for example, what I would do is now to here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but the tail of this I think it's a fox tail, right? A is it ball. yeah <laughs> fox um ball. um so this um gets very lost in in the grayish dark shade of the box so when i see something like this i try to just increase the value and what i do is then a very cheap trick is just to press um control u and increase the lightness so now we can see the, the white part of the tail is much more visible. And mm -hmm. I think it's easier to see something like this, um, especially in grayscale, because you don't have the information with color and can be, can be a bit tricky to see it um, if you're working in color already. Yeah, I, I also like... Um, I realized that what I was doing, and I'm not good at painting <laughs> uh, for the longest time, uh, although things had different colors, they had the same value. So yeah. if you would switch my images, my, my, my bad images from way back when to black and white, they would only be gray and they would <laughs> only be like slightly little bit different gray tones yeah but that's not what you want you want really dark parts and really bright parts and you want to build relationship of shapes with contrast and stuff like this yeah yeah it's uh, it's easy it's easy to lose uh that I, I i'm sure while painting in with colors i will i will do the mistake to and if i would switch to gray to gray sky uh you will see that this this and that color might need to be darker or whatever um but yeah that's it's it's a trial uh, it's a yeah how do you say it it's a it's trial and, trial and error, error. <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh -huh. okay um yeah and so then my next step now would be um um yeah to 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 just put in some basic colors we could we could try um we could try with the fur ball, actually. Mm -hmm. So I have my I have my fur ball. Um, my fur ball base. So this will this will work as my uh, as my mask, for example. Um, and this is this is a mid gray tone. So and I want this this fur thing to be, I don't know, quite an orangey tone or so. So I'm quickly painting that in. Mm -hmm. Next uh, thing for this one. And I will, I will keep the tail for now. So um, the next, the next thing I will just quickly, um, yeah. Oh. Um. Do you have, do you have um, a perforation on where uh, shadows should come from? <laughs> I mean, I trust you with that. What would you suggest? <laughs> uh, I I would say it's coming from above, but we can we can always switch it. 
we can always switch. Um, Kim, is this your living room? <laughs> yes, it is. It's my living room. Oh, Kim. Hello, Kim. <laughs> So, um, okay, I'm just rough, roughly putting in some color. With a soft brush. We will, we will add in the texture next. Just to, yeah, get a feeling. Um, fur tone. Um, yeah, what I always recommend is not to go in, for example, a lot of people, like when they, they see a white, white part in something, they tend to use gray as a shadow. And I think oftentimes that doesn't work that well. It, it, it became, it becomes much more juicy. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> If you paint in some blue or even purple tones okay. in it. Nice. So um, I avoid gray, uh, black as much as I can, except if it's your style. Like it's, it's always a decision. Like what do I want to do? If I'm doing an ink drawing, the black parts can be, be very uh, <laughs> much juicy. Um, um, can be very... Yeah, very interesting. Or if you um, if you have a colored um, piece and it's very vibrant, the 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 black parts can be very interesting as well. Yeah, juicy is just I, I don't know. It's it's it doesn't exist. It doesn't make sense. It's real, it was just like I was looking for words. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's go on. We we will try to do the top. Top part, top part. I don't know how far we'll get, but um, so furball. There's a question from Momotron two thousand. Do you use special brushes or just simple brushes? Um. Uh, yes, I think I use special brushes. <laughs> I mainly use the brushes from Alexandre Zedic Dubois or so. He's a French guy. He's very awesome. And um, the ones from um, Ryan Lang as well. Um, and there are some other brushes. I don't know. It's just a bit. I don't know why it's that much. But I think because I recently downloaded some stuff and I try. I was trying to um, uh, I was trying to test out some brushes, some new brushes. Mm -hmm. But I'm for the link right yeah, now. I think you can find it on DeviantArt. Um, so next uh, for the X, the, I will leave the chain here for now. Um, yeah, next part is the X. So we want the X to be um, to be really dark and. Yeah. We will just see how it looks. Okay, I shared the link in the chat. Uh, just as a disclaimer, like I collected amazing Photoshop brushes for a long time uh, before I actually started learning to paint. And um, you should always keep in mind that it's not the tools that make an artist great. It's, you know, the actual, what you do with the tools, the art and the skills that you have. And you don't need a special Photoshop brush to be a good painter. Um, so don't spend too much time on researching tools. Uh, uh, sometimes that, that is a form of pro procrastinating that keeps you from starting. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Tools make oh. good artists great again. <laughs> well, they can make them even 
yeah they can make them even better i i think they are especially good if you are going for a short look like if you want to an imitate watercolor a watercolor look then of course you should get proper watercolor br brushes of course um but yeah it's amazing how how you just do a few brush strokes and it already looks so good <laughs> it's really cool thank you <laughs> Yeah, um, for the X, I thought it it has it, it's going to be a, to have a shiny shiny uh, texture. Uh -huh. So I'm just yeah, what I what I I try to do I'm I'm just trying to decide okay what what kind of material is this going to have? So this is this will be shiny. Um, I don't know what to do with this stuff still but we are going to figure that out and if the if the material is shiny it will have a lot of reflection of course like coming like coming from the box from the fox maybe like some stuff could happen here um i don't know some mm -hmm. reflection um from the fire especially um stuff like that but we are going to do that uh, in the next step um yeah, um, I don't know for for the brushes. Uh, um, I just can say, for example, a lot of people are afraid of um, soft brushes because they just want to avoid the airbrushy feeling. But I think if you if you can somehow try to use it correctly, <laughs> uh, it it won't look it won't look that wrong. But I don't know. Um, you can always you can always put in some texture uh, later. I think if the if you if you can achieve the roundishness or the three dimensional um, appearance of an object, and then that's the first mm -hmm. task, and then. All the de little details come in later. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So. Um... What I find already amazing is like how you made uh, the rim of the blade, like where the light material goes over to the um, to the darker material. You made like a, this little line, this little brighter line of reflecting light. Yeah. <laughs> that's really cool i feel like that you know this is something that i would have to learn that i would have to look at in real photos or whatever to to get the idea to do that um it's really really interesting yeah i mean it's uh it's always good to to take references um i always do that um i uh, but i think I've I've painted so much uh, metal and stuff <laughs> in the past yeah. years that sure, um, that's it. yeah yeah <laughs> experience. So we just put in a cheap cheap glow um, to do the fire. <laughs> And sometimes I don't even know which layer mode to to use. I'm I'm I like to experiment with it, and I think sometimes when I stream on Twitch, people get very annoyed if I play play around with it too much. <laughs> but I just like this is the experimentation mode where I just try to see what happens if I set this one to this one or yeah, I sure. Um, okay, so. Um, <clears throat> we can do the spike ball next. Uh... Ah, so you group the spikes on front of the ball and the spikes on the back of the ball. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a very very boring task. That's why I <laughs> prepared it because it's like it's super boring. If you want, if you guys want to to fall asleep, then <laughs> um, yeah. Um, 
Okay. I like that even for the black part of the ball, you use the very dark purple blue tone. So it's not it's not black. There's a little bit of color in it. Really cool. Yeah, I think I think that's uh that's something like again, it there's no right or wrong. I can't say I, I won't say like it's just my personal thing that I try to avoid black as much as possible. Um, because for ex uh, I don't know, the last time at work I painted a bullet, a bullet, uh, and it was a black bullet. <laughs> and I think it, in the end, it was it was like color wise, it was quite interesting because I the 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 highlight on it, I I. For the highlight, I chose um, a very dark purple <laughs> instead of something gray, grayish, or even white or so. Uh -huh. So um, yeah, and I think I think that that works much better. Um, but of course, if you want to have a very dark black, uh, super black uh, uh, spike ball, you can also do that. It's just. Mm -hmm. Can it's there's it's no right or wrong. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> whatever looks good. Yeah, yeah. Or what feels right. I mean, I maybe I will try to. I I will decide to 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 make it black in the end. I don't know. It's just like we're at the first at the first stage now. Mm -hmm. So, oops. I uh, find very interesting what you can see very well in the uh, spikes that are facing the camera, that are frontal facing the camera. Um, I think one beginner mistake that at least I did a lot that I would always pa paint, like if I would say that light comes from the uh, left hand side, I was I would always paint the light part at the left hand side and the dark part at the right hand side. <laughs> If you look at the, the the spikes at the right right side of the spike ball, you can see that the the lighter part is actually in the middle of the spike, and the the the, um, the black part is also going. The dark part is also going out of the middle in a triangle shape. Um, and yeah, I feel like once once you get that, that light and shadow can also be in the middle of an object um your objects can can feel so much more 3d-ish than they did before <laughs> if you look at the the tail of the uh, bouncing ball fox um the the tail is getting lighter towards the middle and then it's getting darker again as it's approaching the right side so yeah it's not like light's always at the right side and shadow's always at the left or something like that it's a little more complex than that yeah um yeah i try to i try to to just uh visualize <laughs> how how it could look like because we we don't have reference for for this image so i'm just trying to imagine okay um if the light is coming from i don't know everywhere <laughs> because we have maybe it's coming from the top but we have all this this light happening here um I don't know there's some I yeah it could be it could be from coming from every side so for example here with the spikes we later on have to um, put in some reflection lights again um, to make the material really shiny um, for the X we are going to to do some some um, reflection on on the blade and every uh, stuff like that uh -huh. um, I think because like the 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 light is very soft that's coming from every everywhere um 
we we won't have that strong shadows so if if the if we would say like this sunshine coming from above like if we imagine this part here wouldn't exist like if the box was open um and there was just some sun coming in we could really like put in some very mm. strong strong shadows but because the light is so diffuse uh -huh. we do, we're trying something less harsh okay um for example this could also already be too dark i don't know i have to i still have to Mm -hmm. The cast shadow, the cast shadows that these guys are uh, doing. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe we need to re reduce that. And um, I think the 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 light will be so diffuse because the lighter the environment is, the oh, I don't. This is. I don't know if this is like technically proven <laughs> it's just my own um it's just my own observation uh -huh. but um yeah the more the more reflection and like soft reflections you have going on if the if the box would be black it would absorb probably all of the um yeah. All of the light, and there wouldn't be so many bounce lights here and there. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, <laughs> who this? <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, do you enjoy streaming on Twitch? Yes, I do. I do. Um, so the next we are doing. Uh, we could do the tube. So, and you decided to do it in red, right? Um, so the tube might be a bit too dark. We'll try to make it a bit lighter. Just saturated. Um, yeah. Which, so, what did yeah. you do to, to pick the color? You picked the gray, and then you went from the gray to... How, how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, oh, no. I will try to do it once again. So, I picked the gray, and then in the color wheel, I can see where it is... Um, the height. The, yeah, on the values. Or uh -huh. yeah, what's what's the value of it? So it's almost black, but something above. Then I'm going to red, and I want to have a fiery red and not a pinkish magenta red. And then I'm just switching over um, to the reddish color. And okay. here you can you can decide for the saturation, but again I think the 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 value of the tube is a little bit too dark, so I'm going. Something lighter. Something okay. some more lighter. Yeah. Makes Yeah, I'm currently looking up um, if I can find the the concept art sketches that I made before I made the final design. Maybe we can show that at some point. Let's see.
birthday and sending it through Discord. Um, the scribbles that I made, or uh, some scribbles that I made. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hope I can I can successfully switch to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I won't promise anything. So, um. Ta -da! Ah, it's cropped. Cropped. <laughs> Where are uh, we? Yeah, or you just open it in Photoshop, then you can show the full thing. Oh, yeah, that's way smarter. You're way smarter than me. <laughs> yeah, and just some words about how I did that. So I had this idea for a bouncing ball parkour as a t-shirt. Um, well, I actually started with the idea that I wanted to design a t-shirt for animators and, you know, not something that is specific to a certain animation series or TV series, because there's enough merchandise t-shirts out there. But I thought it would be fun if we uh, would just have something that would say like, hey, I'm an animator and what could be more typical animation than the bouncing ball that everyone has to do at some point. Um, and at those animation schools, yeah, I think it's just cut off at the top. At the animation schools, they they sometimes do like parkours for the bouncing ball. And I wanted to take that to the extreme. And I thought about, you know, what obstacles could there be? And I was trying different setups and fire and laser and just whatever I could think of. Um, and then I saw what would work and what wouldn't work. Like the uh, in the second row, the third one in the middle has like an ice room, and it really doesn't read. You don't, you, you cannot see what it is. Um, and basically, out of many drawings like this, I think I made three or four pages. I picked the obstacles that I liked the most. Um, I tried different arrangements. As you can see, the pipe was already in there, but later I decided on a longer pipe, so it really reads as a pipe. Yeah, I experimented with different formats, um, but you know, for the T-shirt, I felt like the portrait format worked the best. And this is how I came up with this sketch. And yeah, and then I asked Michaela for help because I cannot paint. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, cool, yeah. I, I, I hope I, I will be helpful. <laughs> ah, no, it's, al it's already looking awesome. Like, really cool. It's going to be so cool. So what I want to do, I will, I just want to give the box a yellow tone to it. Otherwise, I'm a bit um, confused. <laughs> okay, mm. so... Uh... No. Momotron already wants to commission you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good news. <laughs> well, I'm gonna give, uh, I'm gonna type in the, the URL to your website so I yeah. think I can contact you through there. I think something like this will probably do it. Mm -hmm. You can say yes or no. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. If it's too, if it's too, too much color. In the too back, much. Especially. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. No. Oops. Mm. <laughs> 
there's some really cool pop art colors in between. <laughs> pop art colors? What, what do you mean by that? <laughs> when you were uh, sliding around, you got some ah. really crazy colors. <laughs> <laughs> Like an Andy Warhol poster. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I will leave, leave that for now. Mm -hmm. we'll leave. So, um, yes. What's next? I will try to, to quickly do the rest of the stuff. I think for the ice, uh, for the ice, ice, for the mm -hmm. ice, <laughs> we can be a bit more painterly. Mm -hmm. Sure. But I... It's good to look at the reference as well. I don't know. Yeah, now you're definitely using some cool brush. <laughs> really like the edges of this one. Yeah, it's from the brush set of uh, the French guy. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think in the end I only use up to five brushes or so. Usually a very, very soft brush. Um, then some brushes with, um, yeah, with some texture. And um, then one brush that's helping me blend the colors um if i want to get rid of of oh wait, i don't even know if you can see it. but if you if i want to get rid of this feathery kind of stuff i could either like blend it through color picking um grabbing the the new tones color blending and stuff stuff like that or um i have some some blending blending brushes here that that are fading out everything a bit mm. um. crazy <laughs> My problem with blending has always been that I feel like I don't get anywhere. Like, then I make a stroke and I made it too dark again, or I made it too light again, and then I start <laughs> over again. <laughs> yeah. And I really like how, like, it really feels, feels like you're sculpting something. Like, mm. I feel like every stroke that you m make helps you to get closer to how it's supposed to look. And I find that very fascinating because that's certainly not how it is for me. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I, sometimes I don't even know <laughs> what I'm doing as well. So <laughs> it's just, it's just, um, yeah. Sometimes I have to figure stuff out. For example, you could, you could draw everything in a different way. Like I could, could try to draw this much more um, cartoony and sharp, like with sharp edges. Um, Maybe that would even work better. Um, um, it looks pretty yeah. good how it does. And yeah, for f I I think it's it's a matter of practice. Like if I if I'm facing something I haven't painted before, like it takes it takes me ages to do that. For example, I was draw I was painting a forest piece. 
few months ago and uh -huh. this really it killed me because i just didn't know how to simplify all the leaves and the wood and everything and i was like oh it's so frustrating <laughs> uh -huh. but i've painted skin a thousand times or um i don't know um yeah metal uh, reflection stuff and i think yeah. once once you understand how how you can achieve a, a specific look it's almost um i think it's it you feel the same when when doing a, a drawing that you have drawn a thousand times before like yeah, you sure. you are you're not that intimidated anymore uh -huh. yeah you 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 make like a visual library in your head and you just have yeah. to pull out the method from your head because you've already done it before you can do it again yeah but, i mean the hard part is learning it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it can be frustrating <laughs> so for example i'm this is where i would just try to see what could ah. happen if i put in a very um a very sharp shape inside of it and play around with the with the modes it's a bit of cheaping but i'm okay with that <laughs> um have i said cheaping i meant cheating, cheating. <laughs> yeah or I, what um you could also what you could also do is like why is it not working hmm it's weird do I have a selection? Ah, uh, what I like to do as well is it's a very it's a very cheap and fast way to to lighten stuff up. Uh, it's the dodge tool. Like a lot of people avoid it because it's yeah it's cheating, but it's a fun way. <laughs> oh, and yeah. I don't care. I I use everything that I that digital offers me. To, to yeah, do it. I mean, why not? <laughs> just just having la layers already, um, yeah, it gives you so much more um, ways to correct your painting that you would never have on a on a canvas with oil, uh, where everything's on the same. Oh my god, this looks so cool! <laughs> <clears throat> so, Yeah, and that I think was another big lesson that I had to learn at the beginning that I was not doing uh, often enough. I mean, now we have the fire actually emitting light, but um, to just take colors from the environment because everything is reflecting a little, everything yeah. is influencing the color of the nearest object, um, just makes it feel like everything belongs together so much more yeah yeah i think it's also if you think about it, it it makes stuff a lot easier and you can like what what i like to do is to become very free in using colors for example when i paint skin tones i sometimes use green and blue to mix them <laughs> and uh -huh. I mean, if it doesn't, in the end, it doesn't look like he has a blue, uh, like, what's his passion? <laughs> like, like sorry for, eye. yeah, like, yeah, if someone hit some, some, somebody, <laughs> everything is all right. <laughs> yeah, no, it's actually, yeah, especially in, 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 in a skin, there are a lot of colors that you wouldn't think that they are in there. Like if you actually take a picture and you color pick, from different parts of the skin, you can see that, you know, on the same person's face, uh, there will be bluish tones and greenish tones and tones and purple tones, uh, all on the same, on the same face. Um, so it's only realistic to, to, to work with that. 
Yeah, or as, um, if if you see some some photographs from people running around in the forest or so, <laughs> like the 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 skin becomes very gets very green and almost muddy tone to it. Yeah, it's kind of kind of fun. Or if you see people running around in the desert, like almost naked or so, <laughs> I don't know. But um, <laughs> you can you can see that the if the light hits the desert surface, it's like it has such a strong um, bouncing light that it's sometimes almost going up until your your belly or so. Yeah, it's, or, or uh, under your chin, like you have a really really strong. Uh, uh -huh. reflection on 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 the chin where you would actually never expect expect it but if you yeah. draw it in i i trust me <laughs> it will look much better <laughs> than without <clears throat> yeah bounce from the floor and from the walls yeah uh -huh. <laughs> momotron 2000 asked earlier if you stream games on twitch <laughs> uh no <laughs> no, I don't stream games on Twitch. I streamed I streamed um Stardew Valley one time <laughs> or two times actually. <laughs> but I try to stay away from games because I'm like I get very easily addicted and then <laughs> Yeah. <Problem with> games. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, I can spend I can spend weeks and months of my life in games, so <laughs> I try to stay away from that. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's actually a thing that I didn't know about Twitch. Like, I always knew it as the gaming platform for game streamers, and then like just a couple, okay, it was probably a couple years ago, but somebody told me like, oh no, there's also art on Twitch, and I've never seen that, but yeah, as a matter of fact, um, for the longest time, only two types of content were allowed in Twitch, namely uh, game streaming and art streaming. So the um, the art community on Twitch is amazing. Yeah, they have this, this, the entire section of the website dedicated to art streamers. It's really cool. Uh, yeah, they, it's a very friendly community as well. And I didn't even know either. I think I figured out last year. February, and I don't even know how. I think I watched some World of Warcraft stuff going on there, or so. I'm not, or <laughs> I I can't even remember. But um, yeah, then I saw people people streaming there, and I thought it was really fun. And um, I tried to use my time off from work to to stream. I'm very I'm very um, uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not streaming that much right now because I, I had to work so much and then in the nights I'm always a bit tired. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's really it's really fun. Yeah, definitely. So and the good thing about um, the shape I did here is like I, I want to if I want to get in so much uh, some more detail I can always shape shape stuff and yeah it won't it won't uh, affect my my other layers which I find quite ah uh -huh, so just adding quite, it on top yeah oh so um And it's always worth it uh, worth it to zoom away from everything <laughs> have a look at it uh -huh. and name your layers if you can <laughs> yeah it has to work all in context of course <laughs> so how do you guys want me like which color do you want me to paint in the propeller if you guys want to decide for the color. <laughs> hmm. 
Mm. What did we say for the platform? Uh, yeah, and the propeller. I don't even know. Is this is is it an English word? Sorry, bear with me. I'm just, <laughs> I'm inventing words all the time. Like I mean, I mean uh, this this uh, thing here. If you could see it. I'm not good with color, sadly. Yeah, just, just, I, uh, we, we try to do something cool. <laughs> hmm. We were thinking about a wooden texture, right? For the, for oh, right, the right, yeah, itself. wooden. Ah, I can remember. Yeah, brown. Brown wood looks sounds okay for me. <laughs> okay, Let's try so it. yeah. Um, <laughs> so again, I'm just trying to. Mm, to bring in color. Um, Maybe that's also a thing we could show. We actually had a whole meeting talking about different materials, and I collected reference uh, for the materials and for the mood and for the style uh, that I was envisioning. Um, because that's just always, it's always better to communicate with reference or discuss images. Um, than just to describe it. Because if you describe something, everybody is still imagining something different. Um, so yeah, my, my suggestion, um, not only if you work on in a team, but especially if you work on a team, collect references for everything. So you, you have a point of reference to talk about. Hi, you two, B2, welcome. So I'm just, yeah, this is another brush from, from the French guy. I'm sorry that I'm, I'm just butchering when I'm bad. Um, it's very cool because like, if you, I don't know if you can see it, but it's like very, a lot of different tones in it. And what I like to is just to grab something randomly and then like putting in stuff. Ah, picking the colors from yeah the picking the colors and then just like i don't okay. know because uh wood is very irregular i wouldn't do it to, to feel to make it feel like wood i would just wouldn't use one brown tone i would just try to <laughs> to get something in like some variations um I would probably try this brush and be like, what the heck is this brush for? Like, <laughs> who, who wants his face right. to look like this? You, but you yeah, can <laughs> always, I don't, I don't even know if it's supposed to, to, <laughs> to be used like that, but it's, it's, it's just my approach. I think it's very handy. Whatever works. Yeah. <laughs> So, and then we just want to get in some some wooden, I don't know, texture. I am trying to paint that in. Oops. Oh, that is cool. It's weird how just just a couple of strokes, just two, three strokes, make it look so much more like wood already. <laughs> Here again. And then uh, we can add some highlights here and there. 
Oops. <laughs> Sometimes I I think I I don't know if she's still there, but Vanny can like she's a very um faithful uh viewer of my Twitch streams and she's always like punishing punishing me for having so many layers <laughs> and then because she's yeah she she loves it i think she loves it when i lose um <laughs> my my yeah my overview of like where am i actually in my file i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's so crazy. Like you just said, yeah, we're gonna add. You know, yeah. this, is, this is making it so much more. Um, like you can feel the wood texture now so very well. But so I, I, I just realized that I did it on the wrong side. So <laughs> I did wrong it. Wrong layer. Uh, no, on the wrong. Like I added the highlights on the wrong side of. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. On the. <laughs> Oh yeah, because the light is coming from the left. Yeah, yeah, like a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Well, but nobody noticed, so I think. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Mm -hmm. I do that um, a lot too with the flipping through the different uh, <laughs> different methods. Yeah, I I just um, merged everything together, so uh, it's easier for me. And I think what I will also do is merging together this layer with this one. And uh, because I'm, I'm not quite fond of the sharp edge here, I think for wood it can be a bit more mm. um, irregular. I mean, it would be different it's a very, if it's a very polished piece of wood. You know, the, like the very, sh which, what has mm -hmm. very shiny surface. Um, but I think for, for this one it doesn't feel that right. Um, so I'm just painting in a bit to to make it less less perfect. And also uh, going in into the shape again here and there. So from afar, yeah. Oh yeah. Can be cool. Better. And this is so crazy. <laughs> so good. Uh, what I also like to do if I want to experiment, but I don't want to destroy what I have done, is just doing a copy, then doing whatever I want. <laughs> um, Another advantage of digital painting. <laughs> yeah, and just see, do I like it? Better with this or this, maybe yeah, I like that, but maybe a little, little less. It's cool. Oops. So. Yeah. Uh, so and then the propeller. Oh, is the, the this thing called? Propeller handles, I'm not sure. <laughs> Hands. <Yeah. I'm laughs> uh, sorry, I hope uh, don't won't laugh at my my weird like blades. Blades. Ah, right. 
yeah, makes sense. Okay. So, and for example, I just here I did a very messy job, um, shape wise. As you can see here, what is this? It's kind of rubbish. Um, so I just try to carve something out, um, getting a, a sharp, sharp brush, maybe with a little bit like. Pointy, um, pointy nip or so, and then pointy tip, and then just trying to do something a bit cooler here. What I really, what what I also really can recommend is getting a uh, lazy Nizumi. Which is like um I think it's it's um it just helps you to remove the shakiness of your your motion while drawing and because here you can see like the the it's 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 not perfect like from from I mean what you will see on the on the t-shirt you won't no, won't even notice but sometimes i'm i'm really i'm really thankful especially when i have to do outlines because because i feel like i'm not very good at doing outlines <laughs> <laughs> um i i like to do uh i'm more working sh in like shapes meanwhile in the chat we're talking uh, about anime Oh, and, nice. Um, What's your favorite ever an anime? Um, ah, well, I have to confess, I haven't seen as many uh, anime series. Yeah. Uh, um, the last one I saw was Assassination Classroom. <laughs> Do you oh, know it? No. <laughs> like the premise is super crazy. It's that um, the uh, uh, students of an elementary school they have their teacher is an alien and they have the task from the government to kill that alien so okay. they're learning life lessons and having normal class about different stuff but at the same time they are trying to kill their teacher <laughs> <laughs> that's just that the, sounds the, fun um that's just the premise of the series yeah. um but you know other than that of course the zaki stuff yeah Films and do you have a favorite anime series? Oh my god, I have so seen. I, I I think I have seen much, but I think compared to <laughs> some other people in the world, I haven't seen anything at all. But um, what really impressed me was Attack on Titan. Um, because okay. I don't, I don't even know why, but it was kind of cool. There was one scene where I almost cried, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I never cry at at movies. And this was like, it was very impressive for me. <laughs> um, uh, I love Samurai Champloo. Um, uh, what else? Uh, I have seen Vision of Escaflown. Cowboy Bebop is really nice. They are the old 80, 1890s uh, um, animes, I think. Um, what else? Uh, I don't know. I have... I've, I've heard of them all. Yeah. Yeah I, should definitely, uh, the, yeah, I should definitely check them out. Attack of Titan, I, I, I got recommended. Over. It's very bloody, though, so you have to prepare, but yeah. It's That's I don't know it's it's kind of cool and <laughs> it it's really it's so funny because when I first saw this like the intro is on German and I I I I was like did she did she say something German like did she mm -hmm. sing something in German but it was like it, I'm sorry but it's not very <laughs> very well pronounced um, <laughs> so you 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 like you're hearing it and you are like 
it sounded a bit German, but it's so f it sounded also so foreign that I'm not really sure <laughs> if it was German. And but it was German. It was German, yeah. Because then one one time I really like I recognized the word, and then I was like, no, it is German. And then <laughs> I I was I was um, googling for um, for um, uh, for the lyrics, yeah. And then I saw that that's. German lyrics and then yeah. I was like, oh to shit. Explain this, we are both German, so yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, cool. Yeah, I mean that there is also some uh, obsession in in Japanese culture with the German stuff, which I find really really funny. Like yeah. even Miyazaki himself, he he loves the German Swiss landscapes and houses, and yeah, that's why and many French, villages French his, as well. Yeah, yeah, French stuff. <laughs> That's why they look so European, the Miyazaki landscapes. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Yeah, what it's so it was really like when I when I when I when I heard to the to the intro a second time with the lyrics, I suddenly could um recognize the words. It was really funny. <laughs> of course. Oh there you stay. Mm-hmm. And then my wife also mentioned in the chat, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, the Legend of Aang? Yeah, Legend of Aang, which is a, a, a US made uh, anime, but I've, uh, I really enjoyed this series. It's really, really good, really great stories. And how it plays out over the entire. Like you have this long story continuing over the entire series is really really cool. Is it? I loved it. I think I have heard of it. What yeah. I liked from 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 uh, I think it's a US uh, production as well was Koa. Like, yeah, that's uh, the that's the follow up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Into my mind, Korra is not as good as uh, Aang. Like Korra is a lot better. Like anime, they have like a much better budget and yeah. Uh, it's also widescreen, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, looks a lot more pleasant on today's monitors. But um, like story-wise, the prequel Legend of Aang, um, or yeah, it just was there first. It's really, yeah. really good. If you liked Korra, you will love the Legend of Aang. Okay, then I have to give it a go. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to admit, I stopped watching Korra. Because like, I don't know, at some point I don't find her as likable as Aang. Yeah. Like when it really got into politics, I was just like, oh, "Come on, guys." <laughs> Boring. If I want to see war politics, I yeah, I can just watch the news. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's still pretty cool though. Um... What I I I am thinking about what I what else have I seen like a series? I think I I ha I forgot the name, but I I I saw a really funny one, which was with a, an older woman and a little girl, and she was like, I she I think she was from Brazil or so, and she was like she was super awful, but at the same time so. Um, adorable because she was like she was smoking and drinking a lot <laughs> and and she she kicked every man in the face and then there was just this little girl um, who she tried to um, to save from I have forgot uh, like I have forgotten but she just tried to save her or I don't know and in the end of course I don't know I, I don't want to spoil anyone but yeah, it's, it was just adorable because she was such a such a badass character, and I like badass characters. So I, I love that, especially if it's, if uh, if the character's a woman. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, anime is really something where you can see like I think that they, they are really good at having uh, casts of distinctly different characters, and usually anime has a lot of characters, but you know they're all different they all have different things while in in american animation is often constrained to like three two uh, two to four main characters maybe um while in in anime you quickly have like this giant cast of a lot of uh supporting characters that also reappear yeah. 
And it's just really interesting how they deal with characters differently. Interesting. Uh, BJ said, movie, um, don't forget Satoshi Kon. Yeah, Satoshi Kon, I love him. I, I think I have, I have seen everything from him. Uh-huh. Um, I especially like Paprika and um, I Perfect Blue, that. I think. Perfect I Blue, uh, Perfect Blue is like, it's like uh, an actual thriller like you could it could also have been uh, a live action movie like it's so realistic uh, uh in a way huh it's very cool and i think um um it was also a reference for black swan uh from i forgot the name of the director but the guy who made Requiem for a dream and uh, I think <laughs> I hope I didn't say anything wrong, but yeah. <laughs> BJ said live actions have a bad reputation. You mean remakes? Like like ghost in ghost in ghost in a shell, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but there were a lot of people who actually liked it, but I was super. I was. I, I was just like, no. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't dare no. to watch it. I didn't. Yeah. I couldn't. I think we actually we know some people who worked on it, like Film Academy. Yeah. But ah, uh, I can't. I can't bring myself to do it. Yeah. So cool, <laughs> says Momotron. Ah. Uh, oh well. But I mean, it, it is pretty difficult to to make a classic. Yeah, I think their um, Battle Angel Alita will be out next year. That's at least what I have seen, but I'm I'm not I'm not really one hundred percent sure. So, um... uh, the Death Note movie isn't good. I I have it on my Netflix uh, watch list, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean. That remakes, it's just difficult. Like, remakes are always difficult. <laughs> Trying to think of a remake that I liked. What is a classic remake that's better than the original? I mean, it's also what Disney is currently doing with like Jungle Book remake, and uh, they are now working on a Lion King remake. And I think Aladdin is planned to. I haven't watched the Beauty and the Beast one yet. I I don't know. It always felt like kind of. I I I think the originals are so perfect. Like especially especially Lion King. I feel like every story beat and acting beat is like just on the right spot. The timing is brilliant. And and to remake something like this, I feel like you have lost right from the beginning. <laughs> Um, Momotron likes the live action remakes. I'm gonna check them out eventually. Like, I saw some making offs for the Jungle Book remake, where it's like really everything is CG except for the for the boy. Um, and yeah, it's just uh. Just amazing how photo real we are by now. We can just make these worlds from nothing. Really crazy. <laughs> BJ says, why do these big studios never take risks with some murder or gore in their films? <laughs> yeah, Disney is probably not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I think there is some programming if you are into the horror stuff. Like I'm currently, I'm still watching Walking Dead uh, with my wife and that's pretty bloody. <laughs> mm. 
cool. The shadows. Yeah, there are actually mm. some people saying for um, for movies that it might be good for the movie industry if we start uh, if we stopped producing films for like two hundred million dollars, and if if Hollywood would go back to make movies for like. 50, 60, 70 million dollars instead of 200, that they could take more risks because they only have to make that little bit of money back and not, mm. you know, not make it as family friendly as possible so that it reaches as many people as possible. Or as mainstream as yeah. possible. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Yeah. Cool that you're already already in the middle of the painting process, but you you're still able to change shapes so easily. Mm -hmm. And that's the the advantage of the layer method. Yeah. Otherwise you would have to paint over, then I guys paint over. And the even worse to paint in in the shadows I have just drawn, it's just a waste of time. <laughs> So I think I want to give it a little bit of I want to give a little bit of hue to to the specs. Uh, again, a splash of color. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend for somebody who wants to start with digital painting? What are good exercises to start with? Oh God. Um, uh, if you don't know what you want to paint, because I think some people are just afraid, like it's intimidating, like white paper is just intimidating. And if you don't have an idea, of what to draw, take a photo, don't take too much time to find the perfect photograph and try to copy that at first. And that's what at least what I learned a lot from when I started out to draw. I, I just drew like when I was 15 or so, I just drew what I liked from, from magazines or comic books or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I think you're yeah, uh, at that point you're you're starting to build um, the library you were speaking of earlier. And um, um, what, what a, a lot of people also recommend is try to do gray scales, scale it first. Like, um, for example, how I did it, try to break the image you see, try to break it down into the darkest darks, the mid grays, and then um, the lightest spots. Mm -hmm. So you can easily recognize the material, for example, like um, wet skin has a different kind of highlight than a dry than dry skin it's much more reflective so 
that you have much stronger, much more visible highlights than um, um, as in the opposite for dry skin, it, it's much, much, um, much more dull. And you can do that for everything. Like you, you, you could, you could do material studies, for example. Like how is, how is, um, um, how is? I don't know. You, if you like Game of Thrones, for example, just take a picture from Game of Thrones, if, <laughs> Thrones, and uh, try to to draw the dresses the people are. Uh, wearing or the 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 what the knights are wearing and try to 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 um to memorize how the materials look like and then and then try to do it from imagination that's the next part so um <laughs> If you have seen something and you have studied it, try to do it on your own and then compare it to what um, to your reference, for example, or um, to other 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 photographs. If it's your approach to paint realistically, of course you can always um, stylize stuff. Like I'm much more interested in uh, into stylizing. Uh, things now than I was back when I was a teenager, for example. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's it's always like you can you can do really fun stuff, and um, that's what I, I I still need to to learn. For example, like I I I can rely heavily on reference, and I think I'm I've I've built some skills in drawing from reference, but I have problems doing that without like from my own memory <laughs> because reference is so easily um um accessible if that makes sense and yeah so for me it's like i have i still have to do the to do this part like i'm trying to to paint it from imagination and now um yeah i have to compare it to uh yeah, what have I done right? What have I done wrong? What could I do better? And I think um, my my biggest advice I can give to you, of course, it depends on personality, but um, I I don't want to say don't expect too much, but I think that's wrong. But um, be more focused on the actual exercise than the result if that makes sense so mm -hmm. if the if the result is not like you expected it's there's nothing wrong with it it's it's like what what really matters is is that you have spent time in doing something um, an awesome way to look at it yeah mm -hmm. and and what i find like someone i think it's it's really hard to to remember because I'm like a very complainy person. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, some someone once said to me like you can you can only get better if you do something. So for example, if you you are on a train to a country or so, and you are like, oh no, I still have to wait for eighteen hours until I am there. And it's like the if you think of the eighteen hours, it, it gets like really frustrating. But it can only be less. So you, the more you spend um, in the train, the more time you spend in the train, um, the less time it will take until you arrive. I, I don't know if that does that make sense. So what I want to say is, if you just go through it and practice, and even if you still have to wait 18 hours or 17 hours, the next time it will only be 15 hours or 14 hours. And then eventually uh, you will you will reach your goal and um, don't be don't be so hard with yourself to draw the perfect image or so. I don't know. I think I've, I think there that's the awesome way what I think that everybody can draw. Um, is and that some people just maybe don't want to draw, but I, I, I really believe in 
hard work <laughs> and um, yeah uh, if you if you practice enough it's like with everything it's like I I'm also a very firm believer if you if I'm very old like I'm a grandma and I want to play piano oops, or if I want to play piano I can still learn it and there are some people in the world that say oh no you are too old to learn it and i hate that i hate that um i hate yeah i hate it so much because i'm like if i am a grandma and i'm 80 years old but i want to play the piano i i, I just need to start this there's nothing like <laughs> and of course in the beginning it will sound horrible but you have to push push through that uh -huh. It's it's just yeah. with everything else. <laughs> I even heard already. I even heard people our age saying that people are like, yeah. "Well, I learned Maya, so now I will not learn Sephardi. I will never learn it." Where I'm like, that, "What? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, you already know animation. You already know the concepts behind everything. It's just a software. You just need to learn where the buttons are. They are on slightly different places." It's even easier than learning an entirely new skill. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's never too late to learn. Yeah. And I do like what you said about that the practice, the result of the practice exercise does not have to be perfect because that could be a problem. If you make like a material study and I think there maybe is a point like working on it for too long because, you know, after a certain while, you're only like, you're not getting anywhere if you yeah. if you spend more hours on this. You would be better off starting something new, learning about a new aspect of painting, let everything sink in a little, and then you can later come back to the material and try it again. Yeah, I totally, totally agree. Yeah. yeah. It's it's uh, one uh, I think um i don't know if you have guy if you guys have seen it but i love to to listen to um the bobby chu streams because they are very um motivational <laughs> and um he always says like you don't have to practice hard i mean like of course we all practice hard but um uh, he's like he's more like it it much it matters much more to practice smart <laughs> like okay. doing the right th uh, right things and um uh, yeah um like i mean the perfection we are speaking of is it's it's like a the wrong way of perfection like you can you can um you can try to to do a material study for three weeks and i don't know or you could draw the same but uh, um uh, drawing painting over and over and in the end you might be getting very good at drawing this specific image but maybe not um the material by itself because you've only only um, memorized how to draw this material in this um specific mm. uh environment or in this specific uh light um environment or whatever light uh, scenery so yeah, but the I I'm I uh, <laughs> I still I don't feel like I'm um, experienced enough to give like very wisdomy uh, wisdom. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, <laughs> you're already pretty good. Like that's <laughs> that's actually one thing that I was thinking often about with Animator Island. Like, well, there are so many like. You can you can learn from Aaron Blaze, the Disney animator. You yeah. can go to an animation mentor, learn from um, learn from like some people who worked at Disney or Pixar. But the way I see it now is that I, you know, I'm not a beginner anymore. I'm working as an animator, so yeah. I can tell other beginners at least how to get to my level. You know, yeah. I might not be able to teach someone to do like super perfect Glenn Pixar. Keen <laughs> level. Yeah, Glenn Keen level. Glenn Keen animation <laughs> because I'm, it's also really difficult to me still. But, um, you know, at least you can, you can always help people who are skill levels below you. Um, and it's, by the way, I think it's also an amazing way to learn because if you can explain something to someone, you also repeat it in your head and you also 
it's a way to save it in your head um and and that can also help you to to get better to understand yeah. what you're working on definitely <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's the hard part to to say it say it to to yeah to say it in your own words from time to time <laughs> Yeah. Like, what am I doing? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just doing stuff. My <laughs> my brain says, do this. <laughs> and then, yeah, but it's all yes. it's also a practice. So you have to practice to 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 express <laughs> yourself properly. But just yeah, if it can't hurt <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with other people. <laughs> So uh, BJ wants to um, want you to tell him how to get to your level. <laughs> to get to my level. Well, you know, I'm partly already at that. Um, on Animator Island, we have a lot of, um, like, I don't do painting, but I do animation. And we have a lot of animation tutorials and tips and tricks on this very YouTube channel. And of course, on articles on animatorisland.com, and we do indeed offer mentoring um, again for animation, um, not painting. Unless Michaela, you want to do mentoring for painting. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, why not? I, I just have to to manage that with my schedule, but <laughs> should be no problem. I'm always uh, glad if I can help people achieve their goals. <laughs> Let me see if the link works, if that is actually the correct link. But yeah, on animatorisland.com slash mentoring, you can uh, book mentoring sessions with me. And if you scroll down all the way to the end, uh, it might not be working at the moment. Sometimes it doesn't work. I should probably fix that. <laughs> um, well, you can go to animatorisland.com and in the top menu, you can see mentor and you can click on that. I have no idea why it doesn't work if you type it in the browser directly. It doesn't make any sense to me. But yeah, uh, there you can book mentoring with me. And if you scroll down all the way to the bottom of the page, uh, you can um, schedule a free 15 minute discovery call with me. Um, so we can talk for 15 minutes, just uh, well, it usually turns out to be longer, but you know, just to get to know each other and to see if I can actually help you um, and to have a look at your work and what you need help with and you know, some ideas what we could do during mentoring. Um, yeah, page not found, I know. Just, just go to animatorisland.com. <laughs> Um, click in the top bar at the mentoring section. It's so strange. It doesn't work when you type it in the browser. Only when you click it. Um, does the the furball actually has fur, or is it um, just a dull material? Oh, I think it could be nice if he has fur. Yeah. Or she could be a she. <laughs> BJ, you hate the ball? No. <laughs> it's a nice ball. It's our new friend. Momotron suggests Zootopia fur. Ah, oh, the fur in Zootopia. Oof, is so uh... amazing. <laughs> I, no, I that's saw... out of my comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> During the FMX, um, that's this big conference for the animation VFX industry in Stuttgart. We're going to be visiting there today, uh, today. Uh, this year too, in April. Uh, we're going to have live streams from there, I hope, if it all works out. Anyway, during that conference, they had a lot of presentations about, about how they came up with the fur. And they actually, they went to zoos and made a lot of photos, a lot of reference. And then they actually, they wrote new shaders and rendering systems to, um, to yeah, to show this, to render this. Um, and it's so crazy how, how like the symbiosis of 
technology and art in computer animation, I think is very interesting. Um, how they were like, we want the fur to look as fluffy and real, and I want to stick my head into it <laughs> as possible. And then they, they, they went above and beyond to write new shaders and new rendering methods to make that happen. Uh, yes, an animation convention, a conference. Uh, uh, it's actually um, in Stuttgart. It's pretty cool. They have the festival, the international festival of animation, and that's like for the public. That's they they screen animation short films all day, and they have like an uh, open air cinema where they just show different animation. Films. And at the same time, they have the, the expensive conference for uh, industry professional, but, but also for students, um, where you can learn about all the latest blockbuster projects and what they did to achieve the amazing things. Um, um, yeah, I mean, the ITFS, the Festival of Animation, is more like Comic Con. And and E3, and the um, the FMX is a little more serious. Like they have schedules, and and and, and there are no cosplayers there. <laughs> People in no. suits. Um, yeah. At the ITFS, you can see a lot of animation. It's in Germany, of course. I'm sure uh, wherever you are, they have animation films too. Um, it's really cool that that has caught on like everywhere in in the world now. <laughs> I find it very interesting, Momotron. Um, they have actually we we made interviews the uh, previous years. One of my favorite interviews is uh, with Ed Hooks. He's an acting teacher for animation. If you are into animation, you need to to listen to Ed Hooks and read his book or watch the interview that I did with him at F. Um. <laughs> Yeah, they mean serious business. No, it's it's really it's really cool because actually the 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 big studios are there too, and you you get a look behind the scenes of like Marvel films before they are even released and stuff like that. Yeah, and we will be there in April on this channel, hopefully partly live, please. <laughs> <laughs> The fur already looks amazing. I, I try to figure out like your method. <laughs> I think I can from just watching. Do you have like a certain approach to this? Uh, on how to paint fur? Yeah. Or, um, <laughs> I think here yeah, it was a good decision from starting to from dark to light because I can just roughly paint in the uh, the light parts and the dark parts. The dark part is looking through, so I just place like the yeah the fluffy part on top of it, <laughs> uh -huh. and um, I actually let this kind of stuff um, in. So it looks like it has different layers of fur. I I just wonder if it's it, it might be too if it should be a bit more stylized, maybe. I'm not sure. But I can always always go in. Mm. Have have to take a sip of, of coffee. <laughs> yeah, I actually have to get some something to actually. <laughs> so, yeah, we were at first we were thinking like that I'm just here for the first hour, but I just find this so interesting. Like <laughs> streaming with two people it actually makes a lot of sense. So <laughs> you can focus on the, the painting from time to time and I can I can do a little more talking. Not yeah, it's also much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, that's great. <laughs> I'm glad. But yeah, this is also a thing where it makes sense to paint because like in, in 3D, you would, you would have to do a lot of testing and a lot of changing materials to get like fur looking exactly how you want it to look. And in painting, you know, you, you control the final image directly and potentially you need a lot less um, time to create the result that you want. And render power. <laughs> yeah, no render power. No days of waiting. In the chat, they're talking about Origai. Origai. I don't, I don't know. know. I have to confess. <laughs> <laughs> So cool. Every time you zoom out, I'm like <laughs> amazed <laughs> by how, how it's coming along. That's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> The sun is really doing weird stuff at the moment. <laughs> mm. Why? Did you save actually? <laughs> no, but this is a good point. <laughs> a good point. <laughs> You're like a quarter to half done with. <laughs> probably save. <laughs> yeah. Like we've been probably. at it like what two hours? <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you for <laughs> telling me that. <laughs> Hi Kim. Yeah, it's funny because in uh on my Twitch stream I actually um uh one of my uh moderators made um a uh, reminder on um that i should save like it's it's um popping up in the chat like did you even mm -hmm. save i'm like oh yeah <laughs> i should probably do it now ah <laughs> oh, bj has to go <laughs> bye bj <laughs> thank you thanks for stopping by and watching have a nice <laughs> one yeah, stay, stand by on Animator Island for the t-shirt. <laughs> Ciao! Bye-bye! Mm -hmm. Um, I think I will merge the tail. What t-shirt? <laughs> so it's your turn, Freddy. <laughs> it's going to be a t shirt that you can. It's our first ever merchandise and it's going to be sold on animatorisland.com. And you can wear it and you can show your animation friends that you're an animator and make them jealous because they also want this awesome shirt. And your non animation friends, they will be like, huh, what is that? But it still looks cool. So yeah. If you want to get that feeling, get the animator island. Teach. I should practice this. <laughs> uh, we were talking about um, enemy um, 
earlier. And Kim, you actually, you have an anime on YouTube. It's in German, but... <laughs> but still. It's the pizza one. Yeah, I did voices for it. it was so much oh, fun. really? Nice. I didn't know. Yeah, I did the... the Pit, the hero guy. I did a monk and a villain. Mm. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> but yeah, I can see again how special brushes make sense for this case where you have fur. Yeah, it it's just it just takes uh it just um saves a lot of time. I think it it, it that's that that's the thing about uh using brushes um so they make sense and it's not just cool. <laughs> like without any purpose. Like uh, -huh. uh I always try to think about using the brushes with a sense of purpose so it actually makes sense <laughs> and not because uh, it's just a cool brush somebody somebody mm -hmm. successful is using uh, that doesn't always work out because some brushes are just cool <laughs> because they're cool but yeah Can your cousin draw? <laughs> okay. Tell the people you are you your cousin, Kim. <laughs> Is it your your uh second personality maybe? <laughs> yeah, and my cousin did something <laughs> on this show. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really nice. This is a very neat trick. Okay. <laughs> but these are things again that you need to know. Like I really like how it's and then the the brighter parts are kinda in the middle, but it's very, very good placement. <laughs> Yeah, um Yeah, it's funny for for example if you if you think about it you would just like draw it in like this and it would look like a room somehow. But what I think what painting is I I will show you. Um if I if I remove the selection now you will see that this part here like it's it's merging together yeah so what what will i do to to solve this problem and what i think now is like yeah maybe i could uh, bring in a little bit of a bounce light from this top ceiling mm -hmm. to this uh to this wall and what i will just do is like lighten it up a bit so <laughs> you can see the dark edge is much more visible mm -hmm. and um um yeah that's 
I mean, it's it's just a tiny thing, but I think that's what I'm doing most of the time is like pro doing problem solving or so in a way. <laughs> like if if something doesn't work out, or I mean, there there's a lot of cast shadows um, missing here. That's what we could also think about later on. Is like how to make the stuff feeling like it's actually. Uh, inside of this box um, yeah there's so much you can do about mm -hmm. everything but uh, just to to make it better oh. painting will be so slick <laughs> Oh. Mm. For example, here we could add a little piece of shadow. Or even mm. here. More shadow, okay. Um yeah that this one is interesting. I think I would just it. maybe it's a bit too gray um no hmm. This is a hard one for some reason. Um, maybe it will be more visible if I paint paint this step in. Um, yeah. I also wonder if it should the the front side of his little um, of this little element where he's standing on, if that should be seamlessly with the frame. Yeah, you mean the little gap here. Yeah. 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 But we can just fix that. Oh man, I still wanted to work on other stuff today, but it's so interesting. I don't want to leave the stream. <laughs> no, we uh, we can. I mean, how long are we already streaming? <laughs> a little above two hours. <laughs> okay, so we can set us a deadline. So I can probably we can probably uh, finish this one at two hours and a half so in 22 minutes is that all right or yeah okay <laughs> then everybody can write their own uh, <laughs> design uh, your own t-shirt yeah before. design your own <laughs> Maybe we can remove the hard edges here later on as well. Mm -hmm. Ah, so fast and it's gonna be so wonderful. <laughs> it's gonna be my favorite t-shirt. Oh. 
Thank you. So, for them back. The good thing about keeping everything as a layer separate, uh, uh, separated in, uh, in layers is you can always change everything individually. And I've <laughs> uh, since, like in production, everything needs a change from time to time or the client wants <laughs> to have something different or whatever <laughs> i find this a, it's the more reward rewarding um, thing because you have you it will keep everything nice and tidy and you don't have to do very much about it to if there's just minor things uh, to be changed, like colors or so. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to pay around, paint yeah. around things. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Makes sense. Gotta have to share a link with JK, the co-founder of Animator Island. I'm not sure he has seen it yet in the stream. Of course, I'm just thinking about it now. <laughs> <laughs> but we announced it yesterday, so... <laughs> So, last 15 minutes. <laughs> um, I want to carry on with, uh, well, I will just. Oh, I will draw in the rest of the floor. Yeah. No. Why? Uh, does your selection have to be so precise? Is that a layer you put on top of things, or...? Uh, the selection? Um, no, the, the only thing why I cut out this part is because this part is together. Like, this, this part is on the same layer as this one, and if uh -huh. I take a big brush, I will probably draw in. Go over it. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's the only reason why I... So 
So, in this one will be fun. I'm eyeballing the perspective here. <laughs> mm. um, no. Idea. BJ is back! Yay! Yay. <laughs> oh, nice. Hi! Good to see you again. Um, maybe a touch of glow. Because glow is always nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we are going to stay here. Uh, for 15 more minutes, so mm -hmm. if you want to ask something, now it's your chance. Your your last chance. Forever, no. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> Maybe I can fill the silence with some more talks about the concept. Um, I was actually thinking about doing the th the whole thing in 3D at first, but I abandoned that thought for the same reason that I'm not good with uh, shading and rendering <laughs> in 3D. Mm. Um, but it helped me to um, uh, to find the layout. Like I actually have like a uh, like a previous of the box that I uh, modeled in Blender, and then I could just take this previous into Photoshop and draw over it, um, and have the correct perspective because mm -hmm. in three D you get correct perspective for these kind of things. Um, yeah, and I was also thinking about we could like actually make a parkour and then animate the ball bounce. Um, that was one of my first ideas, but I had to quickly abandon that because um, in order for the ball to actually go through to the parkour, the ball needs to be relatively small and he needs to have distances between the obstacles to, you know, jump over stuff, jump under stuff. So I needed a lot more spacing if I actually wanted to animate it. And I figured that didn't look so good for a t-shirt because there would just be a lot of white space. Um, but eventually um, I'd probably make some exercises with a uh, bouncing ball ob obstacle courses because I really like the idea of having a bouncing ball jumping through different uh, traps and fire and ice and fire mm. balls and uh, spike balls and stuff like that. I think it's really cool. <clears throat> uh, BJ asks, I know nothing about painting. I, wow, okay. What are you saying? Um, I see a lot of artists render 3D images and paint over it. Do you think that's a good way of achieving a good result? Um, yeah, I mean, it depends on, um, on what the task is, I think, because I see, I, definitely see the advantage of it for example especially in environment um, stuff because it takes so much time to prepare or to do a layout in uh, 2d with all um, the perspective and if you want to really have a proper pers perspective there's so much stuff you um, 
it's like math <laughs> um and especially in concept art um for games or movies i think what matters is time and um if you are very good in 3d and can um just just do a very quick layout in 3d which eventually will save you like two or three hours of work because you just did it with a few cubes and and or modeled it um i think it makes it definitely makes sense i i don't use it personally but um i've seen a, f uh, a lot of people that um that did a rough layout of the um of the the environment environment and then just uh, painted over it and yeah i think i think it definitely makes sense uh time wise um and also if your approach is to do something very uh realistic but i as i think about it you can even do cartoony stuff with it as well um yeah i think i think um it, it definitely makes sense it's the only thing i would say don't do it if you are not familiar with a 3d program because i it might take longer to uh to actually um to get familiar with the 3d program instead of just drawing it <laughs> but i mean that depends on your skill of course mm -hmm. good point i i i um for example at my graduation movie i would have loved like I think my my boyfriend did some some very rough rough cube layouts for um for the background drawing so I can uh, paint and uh, anything in almost right perspective wise <laughs> so it wasn't a complete disaster um yeah <laughs> no but um yeah it helped like even if it's just a few cubes and you you for example, you want to have a fifty millimeters perspective. It's much more true to to um, as if I would have tried to figure out how to do a fifty millimeter lens um, environment uh, sketch mm -hmm. on my own. So uh, this was really helpful. But usually I don't do it because I need someone who helps me. <laughs> In that case, it was my boyfriend, but I couldn't do it on my own. Maybe I could do some cubes. I'm not sure, but I... <laughs> yeah, worst case, you have to learn something new. Well, yeah, that's true. It takes true. time. You need to have the time for that. Yeah, yeah I'm not very patient at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, does the fire have a special color, the the bottom fire? Hmm. Like bluish or so? Yeah, we already have orange fire. So. Yeah. Something magic. So. <laughs> the colors here are all a bit. Um, a bit dull, but that's because we are working on CMYK and I can't use the full spectrum of the mm -hmm. colors actually. Yeah, printing. yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering why does the blue not look like I want it to look? But then mm -hmm. I, I recognize that we are still working in uh, CMYK. Yeah, I understand the point. I think animators' heads use it too, 
to decide the layers and stuff, but I'm not sure. Yeah, for example, in um, the studio I'm working in um, from time to time, um, they use 3D models as reference for very complex um, camera moves. Like if you want a camera to move around the body and then like zoom out or do whatever fancy stuff, I don't know. They just quickly put in a 3D reference so the animators can actually um, animate on top of that uh, layout and uh, to go along with the camera move, which is of course uh, 3D or 2.5D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, layouts are very important. For Definitely. It would be super funny if there was a baseball bat near the exit door. <laughs> baseball bat? You want to hit the fire ball? <laughs> Or a bouncing ball doesn't even fit through the door. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a symbolic picture. I had so many ideas for trap for the poor bouncing ball, stuff falling from the ceilings, the walls coming closer and stuff like this maybe this would be like a fun little game <laughs> bouncing ball the game so next time on animator island we're doing <laughs> uh sorry again next time on animator island we're doing game develop <laughs> yeah cool nice <laughs> who knows <laughs> It has animation too. So I will just quickly, quickly draw in some color for, for the emboss, 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 emboss thing. Emvel? Em. What is it called? I don't know. Emboss in German. <laughs> Cartoony folly thing. Um, and then. I will say goodbye <laughs> to everybody for today. Yeah, Envil. But Emboss also seems to be possible. Okay. Mm. All right, we are approaching the end of this stream. So if you have any last question that you want mm -hmm. to ask, please just do that. And we will try our best to answer it. But it was a very funny uh, experience. Uh, it was quite mm -hmm. quite amusing. <laughs> yeah, we I had some very enjoyed it too. very nice guests here as well. Uh -huh. It's really cool. Yeah, we can definitely do something like this again. If you ever want to do something on any other island. <laughs> <laughs> or just maybe you start with your own channel again on Twitch. On Twitch, yes. Yeah, I, tr I need to be more active. I have a bit more time now, so probably, probably <laughs> something. BJ says he's the best guest ever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you Way are. to go, confident. <laughs> 
Okay, so that's our work in progress until now. And yeah, maybe um, my next step would be to draw in the rest and then maybe change the colors a bit to make everything more, um, to tie everything together. Um, Doing some shadow work on everything a bit, more reflection work, and yeah, and then maybe it's done. And then, of course, you have to, to include the revisions from the client. <laughs> oh, yeah, super tough client. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His and annoying ideas. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. is uh, in red. <laughs> Uh, this is really, it's already looking so much better than I could have ever imagined. Oh, can you switch on the other background color again? I'll yeah, sure. how that looks too, because we're going to sell the t-shirts in two different colors. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's going to be nice. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so very much. Um, also for agreeing to do this on stream. Um, I know it's not too, too easy to talk and work at the same time. <laughs> It was yeah, fun. It's really cool to do this with two people. Um, uh, DJ says, yes, we will uh, uh, ask if we will post the final image on Facebook. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. Um, and Venny Valley asked a last question. Did you drink something, Michi? You know, dehydration is a serious thing in the artist section. <laughs> <laughs> I... Had some coffee. <laughs> awesome. Um, and well, one last question from my side. When are you going to stream the polishing part on Twitch? <laughs> <laughs> it's There's nothing planned yet, but I can talk to Patty, maybe. <laughs> or watch another... Uh, Sorry, I'm promoting. No, I don't want to promote. <laughs> no, you can't promote. Sure, um, promote away. I'm, I'm also doing other stu uh, other other stuff on um, on Twitch, so mostly character design. But um, yeah, maybe maybe uh, you want to have a look at it as well next time. I don't oh, know. Well, I, yeah. there, but there's nothing scheduled until now. I'm gonna I'm gonna post a link just in case, just so you can follow Paleon for when she is doing another thing. And yeah, so check her stuff Ooh. out. Uh, I'm gonna post your the link to your website again too. So yeah, if people wanna send you commission stuff, now is the time, right? <laughs> yeah, time, right? Um, okay. there we go. And yeah. Thank okay. You very much, cool. Thank you guys. It was Thank an amazing you, experience talking with you. And yeah, I hope to see you around on the channel, maybe on her channel. And have a great day wherever you are. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye bye.